So, this is going to be okay, uh, lambda y plus uh, lambda plus a y right. Then I am going to get uh, what one uh, y is that, is that right? Uh, yes. Okay, but if it is to be in the same subspace, okay. This so this this is not in V one. This belongs to V one only if a is zero. But that is one fixed element of the group. Okay. So this proves the result. So the trans this translations on a line represented on a two-dimensional vector space cannot be fully reduced. Okay. Now some of you may be familiar, but there are lots of representations which occur in physics. Okay. Uh, Which are full, which are already irreducible. So let me give examples of irreducible, irreducible representations. These are examples, okay. which are of relevance to okay, physics. Okay. So the the three-dimensional. Representation let me call it dr, it is simply r of rotations representation is d, okay. It is a self representation. This is irreducible. I will prove later uh, it is not completely trivial to prove that it is irreducible, but we will tackle similarly okay, similarly the the two dimensional uh, representation self representation of S u 2 etcetera or if you are familiar with the angular momentum j representation of S u 2 or S d j matrices okay, they are all irreducible. There are many others in fact later we will see that we will mostly encounter only, only these things. Okay. Now here is a theorem before I prove Schur's lemma. Okay. Can be written is said in many ways, okay. but I will write it here. Let H be a Hilbert space script H okay. with scalar product let me put the scalar product like this okay. you are supposed to put entries here alpha beta whatever okay. let gamma put the ug G is in some G okay. B a unitary representation. So the crucial word is unitary of G. Okay. Then gamma is a direct sum of gamma i, where gamma i are irreducible okay. 
gamma i are irreducible. Okay, so, it can completely decompose into direct sum of irreducibles. Also, okay, if h is summation h i, where h i carries i r r comma i, this sum here, so this is sum, this sum called 1 is an orthogonal direction. You know what that means? This phase, you know what it is. Okay. So, obvious vectors are so if that is if x i belongs to h i then x i y j say x j 0 i not equal to j. So, if you have a unitary representation at least certainly in finite dimensions you can take it apart into direct sum of irreducibles. So, every unitary representation is built up of irreducible representations. Okay. 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 The, in the finite dimensional case the proof is rather easy. So, let us see how it goes. Okay. The, the proof is as follows. If H is a Hilbert space, okay. and H zero is a sub is a subspace, okay. there exists H one. Okay. Uh, orthogonal to h 0 such that h is h 0 plus h 1. You can decompose a Hilbert space uniquely into a direct sum of if you give me one subspace I can find the orthogonal subspace uniquely. Remember that for example, in two dimensions if I gave you the subspace consisting of vectors like this okay, vectors like this the complementary space is not fixed. For example, I say the complementary space can be anything like this right it can be anything for any lambda fixed lambda. So, if you give me the subspace I would not know the complementary subspace it is not fixed, but if it is a Hilbert space and I require orthogonality it is uniquely fixed. Do you know how to prove this? The proof is the as follows ok. One way to prove it is as follows ok for let us say E 1 E n be an orthogonal basis well mm. well there are several ways of proving it okay. for gram schmidt do you know gram schmidt you know gram schmidt method yeah, yeah. yeah so there exists an orthonormal basis E 1 up to E k, E k plus 1, E k plus n, right, where this first set E 1 E k okay, spans at 0, the rest 
e k plus 1 e k plus n spans h 1. Yeah. So, that completes the proof because uh, so, so, I know what is h 1 you choose this basis ok and the span of this will give you h 0 and take the orthogonal basis ok which by Gram Schmidt by writing those Gram Schmidt determinants you know what they are take their span you will get h 1 that is it. So, this decomposition to orthogonal subspace is always possible for a Hilbert space. The second statement is if u is unitary okay, and h 0 is invariant under u under u then h 0 is invariant also under u dagger that is because u is unitary ok because what I know is that u sends h 0 to h 0 ok and this has to be on to because u is invertible and 1 to 1 and on to ok and u is invertible. with u inverse is equal to u dagger ok. So, it is going from here to here. So, I apply the inverse it will bring it back here right. So, if u is has this pro because of this property h 0 is invariant by u means it is invariant by u dagger ok. So, this means h 1 if u h 0 is h 0 then u dagger h 0 h uh, let us say u h 1 is h 1 u will then if u uh, leaves h 0 invariant it will also leave h 1 invariant why can you imagine why. So, what I have to prove is for if x is in say h 0 y is in h 1 then we know that x y is 0 ok. To prove x I have to prove u y is 0 I to prove ok all x in h 0 all y in h 1 right. How will I prove it? To put move you on the other side ok uh, to prove this, but x u y is u dagger x y right and this is in uh, h 0 which by what I proved. So, this is 0 right. So, now we apply this result in the following way okay. let us say 4 ok. So, if there is a subspace h 0 is invariant 
by the representation pi of g okay. and it is a unitary representation So, it is orthogonal complement ok. So, is it is orthogonal complement H 1 ok. So, I can write so I have written H s H 0 plus H 1 ok and both are separately invariant by the representation. Now, how, how will I do? Maybe both are irreducible then I have nothing more to do, but if it is either of them is not irreducible there is an invariance of space. So, you repeat the process ok that is so if either is reducible repeat. until you have put the whole thing as a direct sum of irreducibles ok. This is very similar to how you prove if you that a, a, a self joint operator can be fully diagonalized in finite dimensions. All that you have to do is to prove that has one eigenvalue ok. The same proof can be used for example, to show if you give me a separate joint operator k on a finite dimensional Hilbert space can be completely diagonalized because what I will do is in finite dimensions then because I will look for one eigenvalue and by that always exists because the characteristic polynomial is at least one root ok and it will be real because k is self joint ok. So, you have one one dimensional subspace where k is diagonal you take the orthogonal complement go on repeating ok. You will find the whole thing splits up into a direct sum of one dimensional subspaces which are eigenvectors ok. So, this is the quickest proof for showing that a self adjoint operator can be diagonalized and it is the same thing that we are doing here. So, now what I want to prove is this I want to prove this grand theorem ok. So, I want to prove Schuh's lemma ok. I'll, let me state the theorem then I will come back and give you some preliminary results to prove it ok. This is really a very central theorem and very simple given IRS this, this is important that they are irreducible representations ok. Gamma a by some linear operators d a of g gamma b d b of g on so there are two parts one on vector spaces ok V A B B if if there is a if a linear operator Yes, ok. S is taking you from V A to B V B. So, it could be some rectangular matrix a priori. It is a linear operator, but its domain is here, ok. So, linear in the vector is here, but the values are here, ok. So, it is some could be a rectangular matrix or V A may be V B, everything is possible, ok. So, if it has a property. S 
S ok T A of G is D B of G S So, here I first apply D A of G and go to the vector space. So, this is on V A, take a vector in V A, okay, I will this end up in V B. Here I will first go to V B with S and apply D, okay, it has S as this property, these are irreducible representations. So, we say S intertwines the two IRS. Then the claim is then A either S is 0 or S is invertible and for the equation I have written down D B or G is S D A or G S inverse, the two representations are equivalent ok. The two that is the two IRS are equivalent. What is there is some an excluded case here? Can you see what I am ex excluding the possibility? There is one case class of this theorem is not empty, there is some whole lot of cases I am saying cannot happen. What are those cases that, that cannot happen? Where that will happen if S is singular but not 0, cannot be. So, this is. cannot be that S is singular, but not 0. The only is there are only two extreme possibilities either it is 0 or it is invertible okay. cannot have cannot be that it has one eigenvalue which is 0 that is impossible. The second part is the following okay. same result okay. in this case if a linear operator in this above case okay, T now I will take from V A to V A okay, in above case. commutes. with all D A G So, suppose I have here I am specialized into the case, but the domain in the range are the same what will happen is T is a multiple of identity. that is T is of the form some lambda 1 lambda some fixed number ok. These innocent looking theorems are so powerful that you will be able to get orthogonality of special functions the d fun if you are fam even the orthogonality of the y l f functions with all normalizations you can get ok. So, do any calculation so, do what they look like you can get okay. for all groups you can get and you can tell um, the entire structure of the representation theory general representation theory of finite and compact groups all kinds of things okay. in the infinite dimensions situation is much more complicated. 
So this looks very simple and how will I prove it? The proof I am taking from Weiss book. At least the proof I found, which I found, maybe others, uh, the proof I found was in Weil, okay. uh, it's classical groups chapter 5. So what I want to show is as a preliminary okay, let L okay, be a linear operator from B to W. There are two elementary definitions. The null space, you know what it is? NL of L is what? Huh? All the vectors which it annihilates okay. is that is a subspace of V, okay. set of all x in V, so that Lx is 0. Of course, the 0 is in W. So, it are all the vectors it kills off. The range R L okay, is just the image okay, is okay, uh, simply L V. So, this is all vectors which can be written as L X, okay, X is in V is what you get out by applying L. Okay. Then we have the map L is 1 to 1 okay. if and only if the null space consists of the 0 vector. That is obvious, is not it? Huh? Because if they I can leave it a if the null space are non empty, it cannot be one to one because I can add it on to any vector. Okay. So there will be more than okay. So I let this this on to okay. So I will leave this as an exercise. Okay. Is it trivial exercise? On to by definition, if R L is W, that is obvious by definition. Okay. So, L is invertible if and only if the null space consists of the 0 vector and the range consists of all of W. So again obvious. As an aside, it is amusing to know uh, note. Okay. If L is invertible It is also true that dimension of V is dimensional W. Again, I can leave this as an exercise, namely, the dimension of a vector space does not change under invertible transformation. You can prove it in, in finite dimensions. In finite dimensions, the question of counting comes. You can prove it in many ways. So, the dimension is an invariant of the vector space. Okay. So, that is the only invariant. Okay. 
can prove it by let us say for A, okay. let us say if E 1 E k is a basis for V okay. then if Y is in W I can write Y as L x where x is here but I can expand x in this basis so it is L of summation psi i e i but this is a linear operator so it is psi i L e i So, I know the L e i is complete in W because any vector y can be expanded like this or L e i is complete in W complete means any vector can be written as a linear but it is also linearly independent okay. also okay. if I try writing eta i L i L e i equal to 0 where eta are complex numbers I have to prove linear independence of these vectors. So, this is the same as L acting on implies L acting on eta i e i is 0 ok. So, what do I say? L is annihilating this. So, it is in the null space right eta e i is the null space of L, but uh, there is only one 0 there. So, this means eta i e i is 0, but these are linearly independent so this implies eta i is 0 yes. So, I have proved or L e i is a basis for W. So, since the number of so one basis maps to another basis so the number of elements you can just count. So, the dimension of the vector space does not change under linear transformations which are invertible is it in fact a finite dimensional vector space the only invariant no matter how you present the finite dimensional vector space the only invariant which completely characterizes the vector space is its dimension in when you are dealing with real or complex vector spaces there is nothing more. Now, what is Wiles proof back to problem or sure back back to sure. So, in the sure case we had an operator but what do they call S ok. We prove the following things we prove one the null space of S which is the original space V A. So, this is contained in V A will prove is invariant under this representation gamma A by invariant under gamma a means every matrix linear operator in gamma a, but gamma a is irreducible, but gamma a is irreducible. What does it mean then? 
it is an invariant subspace in BA, but gamma is irreducible there is no, so what can I say about because of irreducibility I could say that this null space is either 0 or the whole space, this implies null space is 0 or the full space V A because of irreducibility, but V A is impossible because then L will be 0. Okay. So, excluding so we can taking S not equal to 0 because S equal to 0 nothing to prove we can immediately we can immediately say that the null space consists of 0. I will prove this, I will prove you to you that the null space is invariant, there is a two line proof, but let me show you the idea. Second we prove R s is invariant, it is contained in B B, it is invariant by under gamma A, under gamma B, which is irreducible. So, I have only two possibilities namely R, R of S is either V B or null vector okay, or 0 which will imply R of S is equal to V B or consists of 0. But this will mean that S is 0. So, as S is not 0 by because we will not worry about that ok, R s is V b. So, the null space of a, if s is not 0 the null space is 0 in the range is the full space. So, either s is not 0 or s invert not 0 or S invertible. That's it. Okay, this proves the theorem. But no, except that I had to prove item one. Two, two items. How do I prove item one? One. Okay, proofs. Proof of one. I take that x b is the null space. So, so L x is 0. So, I look at uh, consider I think I called it uh, I, I do not remember what I call the matrices of the representation gamma a is d a of g x I up, now I apply L here, S here. I call it S. I apply S here. Do you, can you guess the proof? Yes, intertwines the two representations. So I can shift. Write this as DB of G. SX. Because S intertwines the two things, but S S is 0 by this, so this is 0. That means, D A G belongs to the null space. Okay. Because I can shift the things. So, I have proved that the null space is invariant under the irreducible representation under this representation. Now, I prove 2 okay. if y is in the range of s there exists x in the domain right in 
y is in the range of s okay. there is exists some vector x in the original vector space V a such that y is equal to s x. Right. Now, I, I want to show that the range is invariant. Okay. So, I look at d b of g on y idea is the same is d b of g s x, but this beautiful intertwining property lets me shift around s d a of g x. So, call this x prime which is in v a because this is a x and I am applying a limit to the group a. So, we prove that this is whole vector is in v is in the range. Proof is finished ok that is it ok. So, it uses extremely elementary properties of maps to establish this result okay. and as I told you it is uh, the range of its utility is, uh, is amazing. Okay. So, today as a last statement I will prove to you one very simple result okay. using this then we will conclude this part by giving you some operations with groups and representations before we start look looking at finite groups in more detail unless you have questions here. Okay. So, I want to show you that an example every irreducible representation of an abelian group is one dimensional remember ab abelian group is group elements commute the important thing is it is irreducible for example, for translation we all already saw a two dimensional representation. So, how do I prove it? Okay. Oh, I, I forgot uh, before I finish okay, there is another part to shoes lemma I will come to this eh. second part of shoe. forgot to say that namely this is a case where d d a g is d a g t implies t is a multiple of the identity right for all g in the group I forgot to prove that. no matter what t is because it is in finite dimensions for t has at least one eigen value called a lambda such that t minus lambda times unit operator on some vector x is 0 ok for an x for eigen vector x. At least one it may not have a complete set of eigen vectors it may be of the Jordan canonical form ok I do not care at least one eigen vector is there is, but this means t minus lambda 1 is singular its determinant will be 0 right, but it commutes but t 
minus lambda 1 times d a of g is equal to d a of g t minus lambda 1 because 1 does not do anything. So, this operator commutes with d a and it is not invertible. So, the only possibility is it is 0 by sure the first part is sure that means t equal to t minus lambda 1 is 0 right. So, we prove that in an irreducible representation something commutes with everything is a multiple of the identity it is a corollary of the first part of sure. Okay. So, I want to give that uh, back to the example then we will stop okay. uh, is rather easy proof. Okay. The, if we are given that the group is abelian. So, let its abelian group g to d g be an irreducible representation of our group okay. abelian group. Fix take an take an edge, then dh dg is equal to dg dh okay. abelianity for all g and fix x for any edge for a fixed edge for an edge for an edge this commutes like this by abel but this is irreducible. So, all by sure part 2 assure d h is some lambda of h one dimensional just one of dimension one cross one otherwise it will simply be multiple copies of the same. So, I proved. So, every irreducible representation of an abelian group is one dimensional. For example, if you take translations, example, translations, okay. let me take A, A 1 up to A n, and IRR. is what a is represented by exponential lambda i a i okay. So, let me call it d of lambda is this okay. where lambda is is a label lambda n. If in case lambda is purely imaginary you get a unitary representation okay that is if lambda is unitary if uh, lambda is Im lambda i pure imaginary the irr is unitary okay otherwise it is not so, uh, the representations of the translations are in one to one with complex numbers. Okay. We normally deal with unitary ones, say plane waves are these are momenta okay, and they are unitary representations given by phase, but translations have many other representations which are not unitary okay, and which are not uh, irreducible. For example, I gave you some, and in particular, there is the case where. Uh, I am trying to remember the Laplace transform that people are I mean this kind of thing when lambda is not real you know pure imaginary 
does occur in analysis for example in the theory of Laplace transform scale if you have done some but anyway most often what we get in quantum mechanics or in uh, wave theory electromagnetism are the plane waves okay, and they correspond to unitary representations of translations. Okay. But there are all kinds of non unitary representations of translations which do not play a big role in practical applications. Okay. So, I will stop here and next time I will give you some simple operations using representations in representations then we will go into finite groups. Okay. So, the representation theory of the groups is in some sense trivial. It is not it looks to me obelie groups ok. It looks to me trivial, but she may object I do not know ok. Infinite dimensional I do not know huh? right. it is trivial no abelian finite dimensional uh, unitary abelian. Sorry, this I do not know because yeah I would imagine yes because infinite dimensional case this spaces you have you are dealing with r infinity infinite dimensional Euclidean vector space. So, the topology will come ok, what is a you want a continuous representation no, if you change the group elements a bit what you are getting out should change a bit no, so there should be topology. My impression is that it will change it will be deeply affected ok but I have not good control on that. In the infinite dimensional case I do not have I do not know what happens. Okay. To answer your question I would say that the unit of the representation is as in this case the period of the unit of the case. But I mean it is not it is not it is not backwards because you can hook up from a unit of the trivial representation uh, interesting I do not know this because it, uh, this kind of thing also comes in uh, um, in when you discuss uh, differential equations. Uh, this uh, what they call zero differential operators and so on this stuff comes ok. I mean you want to analyze say wave propagation heat equation that kind of thing no and very often we use Fourier transforms it may be highly nonlinear. then there is this so called symbol of the operator and there is some activity. So, when you start studying those practical applications numerical applications even these things come and I do not know how they from what I have heard it can be quite complicated, but I do not know enough. So, next time I will give some examples then we will go into basically systematically go into um, finite groups and then representation theory of finite groups and I will end up with discussing representations of the permutation group in some detail ok. I will not discuss all possible finite groups ok, but there will be enough that if you want to you can uh, do I mean go and check okay, what kind of thing depending on interest I will try to show you certain things which come in a much more sophisticated way in discussions of conformal field theories. There are those so called fusion rules and so on ok, they all come here, but in a more understandable way for just a finite dimensional finite groups ok. Fusion, uh, fusion rules correspond to what happens if you take tensor product of two irreducibles and you decompose it into irreducibles. So, fusion rule is this tensor these are two irreducibles right you yes. so unitary irreducibles. So, you can decompose it to direct sum right you can write C alpha beta gamma 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 this is a direct sum ok. So, you are decomposing tensor product of two unitary irreducible into direct sum of irreducibles 
these are called in physics literature as fusion coefficients. Okay. They are very important. The same thing happens in quantum field theory, where they come in op what they call operator product expansions. Okay. And they have very beautiful properties, unexpected properties. Okay. But we can understand them already in the context of finite groups. Okay. They are properties of groups. Okay. There are some identities, pentagon identities. And if you take three of them and uh, use associativity, you get identities and so on. Okay. They are, uh, as I say, uh, quite surprising and of great uh, use also. But so, depending on time and interest, I will do it, or I may jump to Lie groups after I finish the finite groups.